Uh, thank you, uh, last Kilincorla. Um, and could I say in the first instance that I'm pleased to have the opportunity to discuss this issue in the Chamber this evening. And I'm pleased as well that the uh, Minister of State, uh, our local deputy, uh, Fergus O'Dowd, has some experience of this issue, considerable experience indeed, is in a position to respond on behalf of Minister Hogan. Um, Minister, the management of the operation of our waste management system in this country has many deficits. However, the most yawning gap, in my opinion, is the uh, complete and utter disconnect between uh, local democracy and the decision-making process when it comes to the final destination of residual waste. Uh, the Minister, of course, is only too well aware of the fact that Ireland's first municipal waste incinerator uh, will open imminently uh, near Drogheda at Carrenstown in County Meath. Uh, this facility, and the Minister won't need reminding, has been opposed by myself and indeed some of your own party colleagues, and you have a track record in this regard yourself, um, Minister. Since, since the project was first announced, and I'm happy to acknowledge that. Uh, the North East Waste Management Strategy, uh, with incineration as its focus, was rejected, as you'll recall, by local authorities across the region, uh, specifically Loud County Council. And then, of course, it was imposed by the then Minister, uh, Noel Dempsey. From start to finish, the process, in my opinion, was an anti-democratic stitch-up. Uh, with a predetermined outcome which flew in the face of any semblance of local community intervention uh, or any democratic input whatsoever at local level. And uh, it's unfortunate to acknowledge here in the Chamber this evening that I feel again the anti-democratic decision-making processes are beginning to rear their heads again on the question of what it is that we will do uh, as a society and as a community with the bottom ash left over uh, from the burning of uh, municipal waste at the end of, end of our facility at Carrenstown. Um, Minister, you will know that only a matter of weeks ago, Loud County Council decided unilaterally to sign an agreement uh, that would essentially welcome uh, the bottom ash into the Council's landfill at White River at Phillipstown in County Louth. And this has caused, as you know, a huge amount of anger, frustration and anxiety in the community at Phillipstown. Uh, local residents have gone through a torturous enough time uh, over the last few years in terms of the operation of that particular site, and you're all too familiar with that. And now to add insult to injury, uh, the Council has signed off on a massive deal with Endeavour to dump their bottom ash into what is already a troublesome site. We are told by the Council that the deal complies with what they call the proximity principle. But I want this matter to be informed by the precautionary principle. In other words, if there is any doubt, the bottom ash should be left out. There are huge concerns over the question of whether bottom ash is hazardous or non-hazardous, and the Minister will be aware that the literature and the research in this area varies. Uh, as this is the first operation of its kind in the country, there is an anxiety at the capacity of the authorities, such as the EPA and the County Council, uh, to deal effectively with this and to address as well the legitimate fears uh, that the residents of the Phillipstown area and the wider Louth area have about this uh, approach. Uh, and I think until such time as we can say with complete confidence that the bottom ash does not pose a threat to the people of Phillipstown, Town. I'm asking Minister Hogan, and I'm asking you to use your influence with Minister Hogan to intervene with the EPA to review the situation and to stop White River from accepting the waste as agreed by Loud County Council, at the very least until such time as we can all be 100% certain that the uh, uh, safety uh, of the bottom ash could be guaranteed. And I also want to ask the Minister as well to use his influence with, the min with Minister Hogan to meet with the residents of Phillipstown uh, in order to attempt to assuage their very legitimate and very valid fears about the this issue, which is, of course, is a novel one, because we are dealing with Ireland's first municipal waste incinerator and a first case of this kind in this country. Thank you. First of all, that I'm very familiar with this issue, and for a number of years, uh, I've been concerned about the operation of the waste facility at White River, and also I've been concerned as a deputy national about the the whole issue about the incinerator at Carnstown and how it came about and the history of that. Uh, so I do certainly commend the residents for their activity in ensuring that any, uh, particularly over the last few years, any uh, release of toxic or noxious gases uh, into the air have been dealt with adequately uh, by the EPA and by Loud County Council working together. And if the file is examined, there will, you will see uh, significant correspondence from the EPA to Loud County Council as regards that issue. Uh, there are two interrelated issues of relevance to the matter raised by Deputy Nash. The first relates to the issue of what ways are permitted to be deposited at the landfill in question under the terms of its waste licence. The second issue concerns the determination of whether bottom ash produced uh, at the incinerator in question is classified as hazardous or non-hazardous waste. Decisions in relation to both of these are the responsibility of the Environmental Protection Agency. For the information of the Deputy in the House, it might be useful if I set out the legislative position involved. Taking the issue of waste licensing first, 
the Minister for the Environment has no role in relation to the licensing of landfill or incineration facilities or the enforcement of conditions attaching to these. As I've indicated, these are matters for the EPA and under Section 6030 of the Waste Management Act 1966, the Minister is precluded from exercising any power or control in relation to the performance in particular circumstances by the agency of a statutory function given to it under the Act. Major waste facilities, including incinerators and landfill, are subject to stringent environmental standards set out in national and EU environmental and waste specific legislation. The landfill, the landfill facility concerned is licensed by the agency uh, under the Waste Management Act 1996. The agency, when it decided to grant a licence for the facility, would only have done so on the basis that it was satisfied that subject to compliance with the conditions of the licence, any emissions will not give rise to environmental pollution. The agency has significant oversight and enforcement powers in order to safeguard the environment and to ensure compliance with waste licence conditions. The Minister is satisfied that a rigorous and risk-based enforcement regime, including emissions monitoring, inspections and audits, is actively pursued by the agency. And I just want to make very clear here that in relation to whether the waste is hazardous or non-hazardous, I think that the EPA are very much uh, directly concerned with this issue. And while the due process is going on within the agency, they have met with uh, representatives of the residents and they've assured me personally when I expressed their concerns to the agency that they would be very happy to meet with them and to ensure uh, that, you know, you know, that that would not be the case. In other words, there would be no hazardous waste dumped there. Certain wastes are automatically considered to be hazardous by virtue of the fact that they demonstrate certain properties. Other wastes not specifically identified may also be classified as hazardous on the basis of their properties. Determination in that regard are entirely a matter for consideration and decision by the EPA. As I understand it, the commissioning of the thermal treatment facility concerned is ongoing and that the normal testing of output from a facility's processes that is required as part of the licensing process is underway. The testing is necessary both to ensure that the facility in question is compliant which is with its waste licence and that the bottom ash produced may be appropriately disposed of in the landfill facility, in the landfill facility concerned have in regard to the terms of the licence. Pending approval from the EPA to proceed with the disposal of bottom ash at the landfill concerned, I understand that the ash produced by the thermal treatment plant uh, is being stored on site and it is a matter for the EPA to control all such matters in its capacity as the licensing authority. Yeah. And Thank that's you. the point yes. that, the, that the EPA will not issue a licence unless they deem it to be non-hazardous. Margaret, Deputy Nash, you have two minutes for a concluding uh, statement. Could I thank you, um, Minister of State O'Dowd um, uh, for his reply and his own personal interest in this matter as well as a, a constituency colleague with a track record in the area. Um, you quite correctly point out that the EPA has uh, an enormous responsibility uh, in relation to this um, particular facility uh, and the testing of the ash and the classification indeed of whether it is hazardous or non-hazardous. Uh, uh, I attended a meeting uh, with uh, local residents and the EPA uh, three weeks ago and I accept uh, the assurances given to me uh, by the EPA that they were doing everything in their power to ensure that what is produced there is uh, safe uh, and that uh, only non-hazardous waste will find its way into White River if uh, this um, particular um, um, aspect of the project is to proceed. We're dealing here with a novel situation though, uh, the first challenge of its kind in this country in terms of the disposal of bottom ash from a municipal waste incinerator. Uh, and I understand the EPA's responsibility here, but because it is such a novel um, uh, prospect, uh, I would ask uh, that the Minister, uh, that Minister Hogan uh, keep a watching brief uh, with the EPA uh, in relation to the exercise of the EPA's functions. Um, I would ask that the uh, EPA exceed and go above and beyond statutory obligations uh, if we are to provide confidence to the people of Phillipstown and the people of County Louth as to the uh, safety uh, of, of this particular practice. And just in, in, in the final point, if I may, uh, Lask and Corla, in relation to the classification of bottom ash, uh, there are variations in terms of uh, the um, scientific attitude towards uh, whether bottom ash is hazardous or non-hazardous. And I wrote to the Minister uh, recently about this and I would repeat that the precautionary principle should be deployed in the event that there is any concern uh, about the 
um, uh, 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 nature uh, of bottom ash. Um, fundamentally, I believe that if there is any doubt, we should leave it out. The trend in Europe uh, appears to be uh, that bottom ash is uh, used uh, in the construction industry, particularly from the point of view of uh, infill for roads uh, and so on. And I'd ask uh, Minister Dowd and Minister Hogan to examine uh, this possibility in terms of the future operation of, of, of the particular site outside Drogheda uh, and what we do with the bottom ash. Uh, and uh, I'd also ask that, uh, respectfully, we can ask that w would we ask the uh, Minister Hogan to meet with the residents of Phillipstown uh, in order to assist the Nassau Asia in their legitimate fears about the facility given that it's the first of its kind in Ireland. Thank you, Deputy. Uh, Tara, two minutes, please. I should myself agree on the one fundamental issue, and so do the residents, that no hazardous ash will be dumped at that facility, full stop. The, the authority to decide that is neither you nor me nor Loud County Council, it is the EPA. With them rest that statutory duty. Uh, and I believe, and I would have no doubt that the information you have uh, if, if, you, if you haven't given them, no doubt you will, in relation to your concerns that you have. And I know the people of the area share those concerns. As regards the Minister meeting them, in view of his statutory position, I am unclear of whether he can legally meet them or not, but I'd be very happy to bring it directly to his attention, that request, uh, depending on the actual status of the law, as to whether he can, if it might be deemed that he may be technically in breach of his powers or of the law if he does so. But I will bring it to his attention. I can assure you, Deputy Nash, of my ongoing concern uh, you know, about this issue, like yourself. Thank you. Uh, uh